Hello and welcome to episode 7 of building this space fighting game. Uh, and in the last episode we built a beam cannon! Well, the basic part of one. Um, we could spend all day polish polishing these particle effects, but uh, they're serviceable enough for now. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that weapon is actually something that exists in the world. We're not going to do uh, collision detection or damage just yet, but we are going to do the concept of the weapon having uh, an existence to this ship. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into prefabs, uh, prefabs, there it is, and we're going to create a new directory inside of prefabs for weapons. And the reason for that is because we're going to end up with dozens or even hundreds of weapons, and uh, we don't want to um, we don't want to have them all mixed together with other stuff. So we will call this the dummy weapon, and we will make it into a prefab like that, and then we will delete it. Uh, so here in ship, we can go ahead and add the weapons that we want to add. Let's go ahead and just add some dummy weapons to ship. We'll just add one for now. So there we go. We now have a dummy weapon on the ship. Uh, so now there's some question as to how the weapon, how the ship knows that it's got the weapon, and whether or not it knows that the weapon is, uh, whether or not you know, how how you can click and cause that weapon to fire rather than the NPC weapon. Uh, so let's go ahead and start building that. So we'll go into the ship. The ship has to understand which weapons it has and which weapons it doesn't. Rather than actually trying to... Um, uh, we're going to make it so it auto-detects. Rather than having to drag the stuff in like we did with these jets, uh, we're actually going to have the dummy weapons auto-detect. Or rather, all the weapons, not just the dummy weapons. The reason that we can't auto-detect lights and second and jets for engines is because there will be a lot of other sources of lights and jets. For example, the dummy weapons have lights and jets in them. Uh, so therefore, uh, those engines have to be manually created, I'm afraid. But that's okay, we can do an automatic search for the weapons. And we do that by just creating a new uh, protected weapon, weapons, like that. And then here in start, we can say, Weapons equals get components in children. Weapons. True. And then let's just go ahead and make sure that it actually detected that. Now we should get one that would detect zero, that would be the dummy ship, and one that detects one, that would be the primary ship. Yep, there you go, one weapon and zero weapons. So once we've detected a weapon, we're going to have to tell that weapon that it is attached to us and should be listening for our commands. So to do that, we're going to start to get into something called delegates and events. So a delegate is, uh, is a function type. Um, this is a little bit of a complicated concept, and if you've never heard of it before, you may want to go watch a tutorial on it specifically from someone who's actually a programmer instead of a dilettante. Uh, but basically, uh, a delegate allows us to define a type of function, and then after that we can assign any of that type of function as a variable. I'll show you. So we're going to create a new delegate, uh, which is a, a weapon fire delegate. And it's going to take the argument vector3 target pause. OK. So the delegate on its own is just a category, just a type. It doesn't actually have, we can't use it for anything like that. So we also have to create something else. Um, there are a lot of things you can do here, um, but we're going to be using an event. Events are good because they actually allow us to assign an arbitrary number of people as responders. But we also need, these are the things that turn on the weapon, we also need the ones that turn off the weapon. So this is a more generic kind of delegate that doesn't have any arguments attached to it.
There we go. And you will find arguments up and down uh, everywhere in the in the universe as to whether or not you need to have this letter capitalized or not. It doesn't really matter from a programming perspective, um, but due to my experiences in other languages, uh, events should start with a lowercase letter. Uh, if that bothers you, don't start it that way. Go ahead and start it with a capital letter. It shouldn't matter very much. Uh, at least not if your uh, mono develop is actually auto-completing. So here when we go ahead and detect the weapons, uh, we're going to go ahead and say for int a equals 0, a is less than weapons.length, a++, plus plus, and we're going to just sign those weapons up for our events. So we're just going to say on primary weapon fire, uh, plus equals weapons dot fire, no, weapons a dot fire weapon. And so now what we've done is we've signed the weapon up so that if we fire our primary weapon fire, it will fire. And we do the same for the ceasefire. There we go. Uh, oh, don't want to put the argument in. You can't put the argument in because you're not trying to pass in the result of the function. You're trying to pass in the function. So if we put this in, then we're trying to assign the result of that stop firing weapon function. This is actually assigning the stop firing weapon function. So now what we need to do is we need to actually make it so the ship can fire its weapon, so that it can call this event. So to do that, we actually need to create another uh, function. So we're going to go ahead and say... Now, we don't actually have any difference between primary and secondary weapons yet. That'll come later. Secondary weapons will be things like missiles or uh, limited fire devices like chaff. Um, but for now, all the weapons are primary. So, if not primary, return. Uh, Just so that um, later on we know what the heck's going on, I try to put in these kinds of catches. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, fire the weapons. So this is um, a little gotcha. This is a little gotcha here. It's theoretically possible for these events to have no people assigned to them. And if you try to actually call the event when nobody's listening, it causes an error. Uh, so you have to check and make sure that there are people assigned to it. And that's the way you do that. As I mentioned, these concepts may be a little bit above what you're used to if you're a novice programmer. And you might want to go and actually read up on them separately. All right. So the next thing we need to do is we take the ship controls. Remember this? Gone. We don't need it anymore. Uh, and we don't need it here either. So instead we say ship.fireweapons, uh, fire pause, and true. And ship.ceasefire. Uh, don't tell me I called it stop firing weapons. Oh, geez, I'm an idiot. Um, there's the problem. You don't want to use two different naming conventions. Let's go ahead and switch all of these over into ceasefire. We'll do the same here in weapons with our uh, stop firing weapon. There we go. So now everything is named ceasefire. Uh, and let's go ahead and see whether that worked. Target does not exist in current concept. Oh. Perfect. 
And of course, now that it's attached to the ship, it moves along with us. Pretty neat. Uh, but we don't yet have any concept of that having a limited uh, amount of energy behind it. So uh, what we're going to do is um, we're going to go ahead and make the weapon have a concept of energy. Uh, so public float max power equals 10, 100. Uh, and we'll say public float power equals 100. Uh, and then on, and then we'll say public float uh, power region equals 10. And this will be something we'll refine later. So here on update, we say power plus equals power region times time dot delta time. And if power is greater than max power, power equals max power. OK, easy enough. So if we are firing, we need to know how much that actually consumes. Another variable. So here we say uh, if power is less than power cost per second times time dot delta time, then return. Can't afford to keep firing. Uh, otherwise, power minus equals power. So there we go. So now we're going to see that the uh, system actually diminishes in power over time. Well, how can we represent that? Uh, well, let's go ahead and create a uh, uh, this this delta here. Let's go ahead and make it so that the amount of the step we take uh, isn't related to an arbitrary value like it used to be, but is instead related to how much power we have left. So the more power we have, the shorter the step. So we'll go ahead and say step equals 5 divided by power. OK. So let's go ahead and see if that works out. Zoom, zoom. Yep. It faded pretty quick there at the end, though. Uh, it looks like what we need to do is make it so that it's much more um, adaptive. So power divided by max power. Uh, and we'll go ahead and square that. Mathf dot. Uh, 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 pow. Lots of pows. There you go. That's actually going to be a positive value, so. And uh, because it's a positive value, it's going to result in a smaller number. The uh, So the lower our power is, the smaller that's going to be, so. There we go. Oh, except for that'll be zero. So uh, 1.5. 1. 1. Yeah, there we go. So what I've just said is uh, we're going to have a step of between 0.5 and 1.5, depending on our power level. Uh, and it's going to be squared so that you can get a good image of it. And you can see how that actually produces an interesting. Eh, maybe that's not the best approach. Um, what we can do is we can change that out later with something else that does something like uh, changing the color of the beam or uh, the number. Oh, that's what we'll do. Sorry, I just spent all that time to revert it. I, uh, this is my first take. Maybe it'll be my last take. Hopefully it'll be my last take. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, uh, float power percent equals power divided by max power. And we're going to say if mathf.random Oh, sorry, it's just random, isn't it? Random.value is less than power percent. Emit. Otherwise, don't emit. So we'll, so we'll just flat out emit less particles. Ah, see? How it faded away. But it's hard to tell how high our power has regenerated to. So let's go ahead and do that next. Um, we're going to go ahead and have this weapon have public, or rather just, um, it's actually going to be up there, below update. Here we go. Void on GUI. And remember how our ship has this thing? Just going to copy it. 
Oh wait, that's not it. It's a ship, not a ship update. This thing, we copy it. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to make it so that the ship's weapons report uh, when they're low on power with just a percent that ticks on by. So we're going to say uh, GUI.label um, uh, power percentage. Um, rect comma power percent. Um, f f dot floor. Uh, f f dot seal to int. Uh, I guess we need to put it to int. Times 100 plus percent. So uh, on GUI, if power equals max power, then return. We don't need to see it if there's if we're at maximum power, otherwise we do. Shall we see how that looks? Now keep in mind this will also show for enemy weapons, not just your own. Now you can see it works, but we're kind of uh, superimposed so that we can't actually see it due to the, the GUI of the ship. And then now we can. So we're going to have to try and figure out how to do it so that we're not overlaying uh, on the ship. And there's a lot of ways to avoid overlaying on the ship, but for now I think we'll just go ahead and not offset to the left. Alright. So now you can see exactly how much power is available, and it fires just fine. There's a lot of more, a lot more stuff that we're going to be doing with weapons. Uh, for example, we're going to have uh, fire arcs. Uh, we're going to have those fire arcs displayed. Um, we're going to need to change that so that it actually. Uh, let's go ahead and replace it with a box right now, um, because that way, when it's uh, when it when it overlays on top of the ship, we'll still be able to see it. Oh, it's very very wide. Let's make it so it's not not nearly so tall. There we go. And that way when it's overlaid on top of our ship we'll still be able to see it. Alright, so that was this episode, a very simple way to do weapons and weapon GUIs. Uh, next episode we will talk about tearing ships apart with your weapons. The fun part of any uh, space shooter. <laughs>